it's Daria here. Welcome to Scrum Master. So let's say you decided to build a new product and you decided to do it using the Scrum framework. You've got your product owner, Scrum Master and developers with all the skills and knowledge necessary. Where do you start? How do you create a product backlog? You can't just start sprinting without it, right? In this video, I would like to show you how you could go about building up your product backlog using an example product and an example tool to make it more visual. But before I jump into the video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and join my newsletter at scrummaster.com. I constantly share practical insights on how to build awesome teams so that you can do it too. And if you're looking for guides and templates to help you with facilitation and give you clear action plans on various topics, check out my online store shop.scrummaster.com. I actually even have a workshop guide to help your team create a product backlog. Back to the video. For my example product, I decided to take an online educational hub about Scrum. Firstly, it's an easy enough example, and secondly, I know a thing or two about that. I'll be using the online software for product backlog organization from my friends at ZenHub. So let's jump right in. And here we are on the ZenHub website. This is just the homepage. Let me log in to my account. A good thing about ZenHub is that it is integrated with GitHub and if your team is already using GitHub to track progress and issues, the ZenHub platform can help you really organize it and use various Scrum and Agile tools to help you track progress, estimate work, and really have a holistic view of everything that is going on. Let me jump into the software. Here you see this is just a simple board with nothing on it, so we are starting our product backlog from scratch. What is the number one thing we need to do? Well, first we would need to define our first product goal. I like to use features such as releases or other types of milestones to group all of the work under one product goal. In ZenHub, I can use roadmaps. On roadmaps, I can create a new project to represent my goal. The first goal I chose for this product is to get at least 1,000 visitors a month that stay for one minute on the website. This is the first goal we want to achieve, and this will help us define what we actually need to put into our product backlog. I can set some dates on the calendar right here, but right now, because we don't have anything in our product backlog and we don't have any estimates, that would be difficult to do. So we'll We'll just keep it as that. Before we jump into the detailed tasks and other features and functionality, let's start big and on a higher level and create some epics. Epics are basically big chunks of work or functionality we want to build that cannot be fit into a single sprint. It helps to start high level when you are building the product backlog from scratch. I can create an epic right here from this window by adding a new epic. The first epic I am creating is this full Scrum framework explanation available online. This is a very big chunk of work that shows what is the first and most important functionality that we want to deliver to our customers, but it doesn't have any description. So we would need to add some information about what are some of the acceptance criteria for this epic. Obviously we would have a definition of done by now, but this is a bigger topic that I can't really fit into this video but I am going to put a link into the description for another video talking about the definition of done and acceptance criteria. Here are some of the acceptance criteria that I came up with that talk about who this product is for, why we're building this, and what are some of those acceptance criteria. This description will be right here to help the team understand what we're trying to build and why it is important. Now I will add this epic into my project so that I can see what are some of the functionalities and features are part of this product goal. So here you have the project, so technically the product goal for us, or the epic right here. You can also use releases to do the same instead of the project because ZenHub allows you to have this functionality, but we will use projects for this particular product backlog. 
Let me do some wishful thinking and add some of the epics that I think would be great to have, but maybe more into the future. Here are some epics I have added right above our protocol. Let's see what they are. One of them is forum for visitors to communicate with each other. As a product owner, I think it is a great way to engage the audience and the visitors and to encourage them to stay on the website for longer. Another great thing to add would be online self-study scrum classes. This can be actually a paid product so that this website can start bringing money for our company so that we can build this product even better. One more thing that I have added is the Scrum assessments for visitors to test their knowledge. It is a great addition to the website and definitely something that will bring a lot of value to our visitors. Right now, looking at what we have and our first product goal, I do not believe that we really need to start looking into Scrum assessments, online self-studies, or forums for visitors, because those are extra features we can look into maybe at a later point. Let's see what we have on our Kanban board. Here in the epics column, we can see all of the epics that I have created, but they are not ordered properly because we will be working first on our full Scrum framework explanation available online. This is something that I would put up front. We can also think about the further order of the other items, but right now this is not part of our product goal. So I would put it into the ice box something that we would discuss at a later point. Now that we have our epic, we can start thinking about what exactly are the items, the work items, functionality, and other enablers that we need to create in our product backlog in order to actually complete this epic. So we invite the developers to help us with this. Let me create some, some of the items that we can potentially add into our product backlog. Here are all of the different things that I thought about and added into our new issues column, just because this is where we will have all of the new things coming in, but not something that maybe is already part of our product backlog. Right now, I know that all of these items are important for our product goal and for our epic, and I'm going to add them right there. Now we can see all of the items here in our product backlog. If we open up our Epic, we can actually see all of the issues that are sitting in our product backlog. So it's easy to see how many items we have and also see progress. You have some progress right here because I have closed a couple of issues when I was testing the features of Zen Hub. With the product backlog right here, I can start ordering it. Since I talked with the developers, they told me that there are certain things that we absolutely have to do before we can build anything at all. And those are the prerequisites and enabler product backlog items that we have to add into our product backlog. So here I can have those right at the top, set up hosting for a specific domain name. We cannot really have a website if we don't have hosting or a domain name at all. Another thing that we have to build before we start creating any content is installing the software, the website builder. I can put it at the very top so that it is clear so that this is something that needs to be done first. I have also added the brand guidelines here because we need to have some brand guidelines before we start building the content. So it is here to remind us about that. I have added the mailing provider integration right here, but now that I think about it, I don't think that we actually need it right away. I am going to put it a little bit lower because first we need to have some content and maybe then we will add emailing provider. So the first thing that I definitely want to have on the website is the content about the Scrum framework itself. So I can put the Scrum framework content right at the top that is sitting right now at the bottom. And there you go, it is right there at the top. Even though I would love to have the whole Scrum framework content explained right on the website from the beginning, I know that the team would not be able to complete everything in just one sprint. So they have decided to 
split this big task into topics instead so that it is easier to manage. We can prioritize the content and still have something that is providing value to our customers right away, even if it's not the full product. So to represent that, I think that the first thing we would want to have on our website is the overview of the Scrum framework. So I created an item here at the bottom, written content on Scrum framework itself, and I'm going to put it at the top. So here we have this first functional requirement right below the enablers. We can start thinking about our first sprint because we have enough content to already get started. Sprint planning is a whole another topic in and itself. So I am going to do another video to explain that process of how we're going through sprint planning using the same tool and the same product backlog. So stay tuned for that one. In this video, I only covered a small portion of the new product backlog creation. There are other practices and facilitation tools you can use to help with a brand new product. You would need to think about things like customer persona and product vision, but let's stay focused on one topic at a time. I hope you learned something new today, and if you did, give this video a thumbs up, and as always, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and scrum on!